Hello artists, how are you today? Stephanie Oni coming to you from the banks of the Trinity River. This is part two of our steampunk, no it's good, girl. Oh, she's so awesome. Uh, last week you saw her uh, being put together and uh, not sure how far I'll get because I'm filming this ahead of actually making the first video. I do know that the process took long enough that it will be two videos. She fits in there so perfectly now, guys. I I am in love with how our little steampunk girl turned out. And this was just using bits and pieces of whatever I had laying around. And uh, you don't have to go out and buy extra stuff, you know? We, we're trying to use up our stashes. And, uh, you know, we all love those little keys. These, you know, this little dress was an old pair of earrings. Um, this was just charms, some little brads, a clock face. That's another brad, of course. So, you know, you saw how she was put together last week, but I love, I love her little dress. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, I hope you enjoy the process and I hope you enjoy part two of our steampunk girl. She's pretty cool. I should probably name her, huh? I don't know what her name would be. Something steampunky-ish. <laughs> okay, guys, I hope you have all a great right. day. I and did uh, take the time to make sure that I got all of that cleaned out as much as possible. Uh, you know, it really just does help with the integrity of the book. And, um, in the long run, it just makes a nicer steam. And those are things that we always want to be conscious of. I always want to be conscious of, at least. Um, but that's, that's just how I am. Uh, I think I want to make this. Just a touch skinnier. Okay, so for in here, I'm giving it a good coat of glue because I want it to um, stick down, but still kind of have that frayed look. So this is going to go over the top of that. So these paint bottles actually work really well to kind of push it into the seam to keep those two seams separated. And then I'm going to put like this here, no not that, maybe this. All right, we're gonna just let that dry. We'll be back. Okay, artists. What am I gonna do here with this now that I've got it all painted up so pretty? This dried really nice. It's a perfect closure. Really is going to keep this nice and strong and safe. We need to figure out, oh, she's, she's got to live in some sort of steampunk world, doesn't she? Oh, yes. Yes, she does. Okay. Figured that out. All right. So steampunk is golds and browns and yellows. And let's, uh, okay. 
So let's get something kind of steampunky and fun down here. This is my homemade texture paste. I do have a video on that. I'll put the link in the description. This dries really nice and fast. It is a great product. Ah. Oh no. Okay, so we got most of it. It's all right. Getting, uh, putting some uh, stuff on this real quick and then then I'll be ready to go let's see Shit. sorry <laughs> it's like oh I want to make follow, this kind of through on your thought I, uh, I have a hard time with that sometimes um, no 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 that's what you're doing you're following through on your thought getting it done oh yeah follow through on your thought if you had another thought to make. <laughs> <laughs> I never know. I'm just um, putting down some texture paste here for my little steampunky girl. I just figured out what I wanted to do with the page. You're going to put this on it? Yeah, she's going to hang from here. This is Do you see her as being a girl? Uh, I see a figure. Okay. I don't know that I see a girl. Kind of felt like a girl with the little, um, with the, these things on it. That's the only thing. Yeah. I can't believe it. Oz made me go sit outside for a while. He's just like so bored. Like, kid, you just ran for hours. Do you leave me alone? <laughs> Do you let all that dry on there and just pack it off when you're done, or do you um, put it in the water? Oh, on here? Yeah. That ha those have to get washed, or they will ruin the stencil completely. Mm -hmm. Come on. Okay, I think that's pretty interesting. Okay, um, the texture paste worked amazing as always. Um, you know, some of these parts it's really crisp, but then I kind of got in a rush over here and the pages were uneven, so it got a little bit smudgy. And then I actually went through and started to kind of smudge things purposefully, um, which I like that combination. You know, I'm gonna try my ink spray on this first. I am really actually wanting to protect this before I go any further we don't need that to get on to anything else on the book. Ooh. You know, I've been considering what to use on this and it's hard to decide sometimes because you don't know what it's going to do. Now, I don't want to put a ton of liquid on here, which I just did. What color is this? This is uh, the Dilusions Vibrant Turquoise. Most likely it was something I picked up on sale. Um, I, I do do that. Any Ranger product though is gonna be fine. 
any spray ink is fine. It doesn't even have to be Ranger. So don't think that because you don't have what I have that you can't do it. You could do this with watercolors if you had a layer of gesso underneath of there. Um, I wouldn't really suggest doing it with watercolors without that layer of gesso. All right, here's some Tangerine Dream. Now remember, blue and orange are gonna make brown. Um, actually, that sprayer doesn't work, so we're gonna switch to my favorite Distress Fired Brick. And I am looking, of course, for kind of a brownie color, and I want it to be more interesting than just using brown. Since this is kind of a steampunk theme, that kind of brownish color back there and then I, I love what's happening so far we're gonna go with a little bit more fire brick up in here without taking it all off and a little bit more in that corner and this corner okay as I keep spraying so it does kind of sink into that texture paste which is not, uh, you know, new information. That doesn't surprise me that it did that. Love the color so far, um, but I want some oh, spiced marmalade. Let's see what that does in here. Again, using contrasting colors to give it more interest, more variety. And I really, you know, obviously it's going to go with the book if I stay in that same theme. It's kind of my uh, color palette, really. Uh, anything blue is my color palette. All right, let's, um, got this Ground Espresso Distress Ink, and I'm just curious what I can do with it. Now, I don't want a ton of it because this stuff is really potent. And I'm kind of using this as my shadow color um, to get some darks in there. I'm trying to accentuate what's already happening in those cracks. So those stencils, I think one was um, Andy Skinner. I think this one was an Andy Skinner stencil. And then this one was, of course, a Tim Holtz stencil. And that's definitely right where I want that to be. Love what's happening with that. So this is a re-inker for a Ground Espresso. And sometimes I use it just to get that kind of intense color. Um, I'm looking for now something that's a little bit more shimmery. I don't want it to be super shimmery. Um, this is the Tangerine Dream Shimmer Spray. I don't know if that's what I want to use because it's pretty darn deep. But uh, yeah, it works well. That worked great. All right, let's look at the teal color. This is Campo Teal. And you guys know that I do this because a lot of times the sprayer doesn't work. some of those in here just a little bit more all right I dig that can you dig it all right let's see what we can do here see if we can bring some of that texture paste back to white where is my not where it's supposed to be 
which means that it's most likely underneath this mess somewhere. <sighs> Dang it. I hate it. I hate it when I can't find things that I want to find. Here it is. Yeah. So since it's wet, it clogs up the, um, sandpaper really fast. Let's see if my stays on this is somewhere over here. There's the black, there's the purple. Yeah, I was looking for the brown, but the black will work. Kind of a coppery goldy color there's not much pigment left in this one Not a fan of the white. Okay, uh, let's try this purple stays on. See if it still has anything in it. I'm brushing it lightly to try to catch as much of that lettering as I can. is super cool yes yes it is okay uh, I love that just like that uh, let's pull in actually just a touch of Stabilo and see if it adds to it or detracts this is the Stabilo 8046 if you buy these in 12 instead of singly singly they're five dollars if you buy them in 12 uh, you can get uh, 12 for like 17 to 18 dollars 
So it's much better for you to get the dozen, much more economical. Now, if you can't afford it, you know, just get the single one and be happy with that. Now, this is water soluble stuff that I'm using. So as soon as I put water down on top of it, it's moving the ink, which I actually kind of like. Now the stays on is not water, or yeah, the stays on is permanent. So it won't react the same way. That is gorgeous. It's really easy to put your Stabilo down uh, with a paintbrush and uh, it is much more sanitary. You wouldn't want a waiter spitting in your soup, would you? <laughs> there we go. Beautiful. Covering up those bits of white, because you know I don't like white showing through. Okay. That is very cool. And perfect. All right, when we come back, we will get our elements installed. Well, maybe we'll put a little bit more Stabilo right down in here. Now, let's see here. Can we get that lettering? That lettering is not very raised, which is the problem. I put on a too thin of a layer of stencil. You know, it's not gonna really be seen but it might be seen, so I want it to be really, you know, interesting underneath of there. Use a permanent ink, whether you have archival ink or whatever kind you have, use a permanent ink when you're doing this on the top. That's my number one suggestion. All right. Okay, so what I've decided to use over here is this guy. Now I have to figure out how I want it to attach. This is one of our 30 times three projects. So if you go to the video, um, the, this was used three elements, uh, used charms, and gray. So this was the 30 times three project that we did um, in the month of July. And I have to decide where I want to put it. Now, I do keep thinking about this cool clock, and maybe we should look at this. Um, the only thing I don't like about this is that it's a very um, kind of plasticky element, and I want to make sure that it sticks down. Um, but I think it would be cool. This is a short base, adhesive, seven gypsies, wrap around edge or corner, add glue for additional adhesive, use as a stencil, mist background, and remove. Huh. All right, where's our 12 is right there. Very plastic feeling. But it is kind of cool. I like that it's not pure black. I like that it's see through. That's actually quite awesome. And I did offset it just a touch, because that's the kind of gal I am. And we're taking our permanent ink over the top of it. There's our black. Oh, 
and it's not wanting to stick down in there, which doesn't really surprise me because it's a little bit wet still. So what would I use to glue that down? Mm, diamond glaze, that's gonna be too tacky. It's not gonna be right. We'll go with our Fabri-Tac. Dang it. Well, let's make sure it's colored the way we want it to be colored. So the reason why that didn't stick is because the background is wet. And also, you know, the sticker adhesive for me never really works very well. So putting a light coat of Fabri-Tac on this. Fabri-Tac dries clear. It's a super strong bond. Um, yeah, not, not like, it, it does good does quite well. Okay. So, get that extra glue off of there. And reposition. Take your paper or your paper towel. Now, as that glue comes up, it will, you know, of course, pick up that paper towel. So, careful with that. That's super cool. And your Love it. Okay, uh, let me see if I can find my. You know what color? It's probably this this plum or the vermilion. Might work better. This is a time when it's really nice to have the minis. Because the big pads um, weren't able to get. You know, to everything that we needed it to get to because they. The paper's warped, and the big pads can't always get where we need it to get. So that's why we have different sized tools. You're like, oh, why do I need the mini pads when I have this, when I have that? Um, they do have their specific reasons. See, that's what I was wanting to happen. That's what I was wanting. Okay, I gotta take a picture of this, so. And how did you get so off base? God darn it. Well, I'm sorry guys if you got that whole part <laughs> was off kilter. Uh, did not mean for that. It's so frustrating when that happens. This is cactus flower. Oh, that's a nice addition. Gorgeous. Super steampunk, isn't it? Let's see what happens when we add a little bit of blue in here. Yeah, it's not going to get seen. Blue's pretty trashed anyways. Um, this is a potting soil. There's our brown. See how rich that makes it? Perfection. Okay, now it's starting to get a little dark feeling. That's all right though, we're still okay. 
So feeling a little dark, so I need to stop with the ink. Uh, all right, let's get our little Duder Bob added in. So, the question is, do I want it to free float, or do I want to glue the centerpiece in so that she doesn't move? And part of me really doesn't want her to move excessively. So I want a hanger, but then I want to also position her to where she stays. If I do that though, then they won't be able to see what's underneath. The dilemma. Now, let's take our tin snips here. I'm gonna cut that down just a touch bit more, if I can, without ruining the look of it. take our black sharpie to this bright edge. I don't know if I want to put that other element on here. I don't know if it needs it. in. Let's uh, find the hole punch and um, I'll be right back. Oh, wait, here it is. All right, I'm going to use not my biggest hole. We're going to go right in between those two. Try to go center on the book. So since you have a leather punch instead of like a crocodile, this does go through all sorts of things that the crocodile can't go through. Just like that. Okay, so um, let's find a little bit of chain. It's really bright. All right, found an eyelet that I think should work. This is a nice little eyelet tool. Let me put the nipple part onto the back of it. And this thing works super easy, super fast. You don't have to have a lot of pressure with it. I would highly suggest um, getting yourself this type of tool for your close-up stuff. For the deep stuff, the crocodile is the best way to go, but um, it is not always the easiest thing to use whatsoever. I don't think it's very user-friendly, honestly. All right, so we're going to see if I can just do this. If I can just do this, it would make life easier. These are some large jump rings. All right, for jump rings, guys, super simple. Wherever the center is opening. Jump rings have to go this way. All right. If you pull it apart this way, you'll never get it to work again correctly. 
another little jump ring in there. If I can do it just like this, that's going to be the easiest. And also, we'll take up the less, least amount of space in the book. Come on. There we go. There we go. And close her up. It is a tight fit for that jump ring, but she works. Awesome. Okay. So this is why I kind of want to keep her stabilized a little bit better than what she is. It's because all of these pieces and parts do move a lot. I'm sad about having to connect it, but I think it's going to be our best option. Okay, so for items like this that have dimension and there's a space in between the book and the thing, um, I really like to use this double-sided puffy tape. And we're gonna see if one is enough. It might not be enough, we might have to use two. So it is gonna cover up all that cool stuff that I had underneath of there. And of course that makes me sad, but I think for the integrity of the book, it's going to be better. So what I probably should do though, is put a bit of tape down or put a bit of glue down here. Now you may be wondering why would I put glue down if it's already sticky tape? Well, because sometimes that sticky tape doesn't really stick. So you see how that, I'm going to have to compensate for those jump rings. I'm just going to go ahead, I think it's going to take a second piece of this as far as height goes. It's a little, it's a little fussy stuff. Now it does stick to itself really well. But we are going to put some down here. And we're going to make sure all pieces and parts are down and out of the way. Okay. And we're going to pull her straight down. Come on. Oh, does everything need to be difficult here? <laughs> All right, so she is raised off of there right now. So now, before anything dries or gets stuck, So it feels like it's dangling from there, but truly it's not. And let's make sure, I have to look here at this straight up and down. I'm gonna have to stand up real quick. All right, that 257 is a little cockeyed. All right. Um, you know, I, I keep considering putting something more on this page, but I think that it's so cool the way it is that I'm probably just going to leave it like that. Um, I'm going to see if, if that ink dries well enough. Um, part of me thinks about going in and coloring these different 
elements, but she's you know purposely made to have all sorts of different uh, colors on her. So there's no sense in changing that now. Uh, that little head is going to one side, which drives me a little crazy because I'm always conscious of things like that. So let's see if we can stabilize that. There she sits perfectly. It took a half a second to fix that, and now that watch face stays right there. Right where we want it. All right, so I'm going to be very careful with this. I'm going to let it dry. I like that those are a little bit wonky. I'm good with that. Um, yeah, they're fine. I would like them to both be diag you know, diamond shaped, but we're okay. Hello, artists. Well, I thought I was done with this, but as you know, I like to step back and look at it and evaluate and see, you know, what needs to be done. And what I realized is that um, this has gone really pretty dark, and I want to see if I can bring it back just a little bit. Mm. So I have my dauber here, who's like a Tim Holtz daubery thing. I don't know if this is going to work. This is my pinata rich gold, which you guys know I love. Yeah, it's adding a little bit too much. But I like what it's doing. We'll accentuate that just a little bit more here. Definitely just changed the look and feel of it, didn't it? Alright, then when you add your ink over the top of it, it's layers, guys. You can kind of calm it down a little bit if you want to. Let's grab out the archivals again. I think it definitely added, let's go with this plum color. Oh, that's perfect. So we just added a highlight behind things, underneath of things. You think, why did you put it down if you're just gonna cover it up again? Well, it's creating highlights, creating low lights, adjusting colors until you feel like it's right. Um, that doesn't always happen with just the you know first bit. So I, I love that, That's what's happening there. Let's see if we can get any more out on here. That's successful and a good addition. It, it brings her into this more. When do you stop? Well, I, I think it's pretty cool. So I think we're gonna stop <laughs> as I keep going. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, now I promise I'm going to leave her alone and just let her dry. <laughs>